Now, I personally don't like wasting time, so let's jump right into it. We're starting it off with Freddie Freeman. A lot of people are wondering, is Freddie Freeman going to go up to a 90 overall, hit that high tier diamond again? Should I jump in and invest in him early? My answer is no. Even though he has been one of, if not the hottest hitter post All-Star break, you have to look at his splits. Yes, he's doing great against right-handers. I believe his contact versus right and power versus right should go up. But at the same time, if you look at what he's done against left-handers, they still deserve to go down. So contact versus left and power versus left still deserve to go down. And in order to balance it out and actually replicate what he's doing this season, they're going to go ahead and either keep him at an 87 overall or just give him that plus one to an 88 overall because he should be getting an overwhelming amount of support to his contact versus right and power versus right. But I don't think that support is going to be enough to push him up to a 90 overall. Now, is he a high tier diamond hold? Yes, in particular, if he continues performing the way he's currently performing. Next up is someone else that we're keeping an eye on because he is on diamond alert. He's an 82 overall and I want to go ahead and throw this out there. I don't know when MLB the show is going to go ahead and do a fielding upgrade. They haven't touched anyone's fielding, arm strength, accuracy or reaction in the longest and usually they do it at least once a year. So who knows, maybe it's this time around considering the ample amount of time they took between roster updates, but at the same time I can't predict the future. But if they do go ahead and do that, I just want you all to keep in mind that that could lead to a bunch of surprises and players hitting diamond, gold, silver, bronze, whatever it is in terms of tiers, because fielding does go ahead and help out a ton as well. Now, Brian Reynolds, I still think all of his hitting attributes deserve to be increased, even if, it's, even if it's by small margins, because he's been doing great against right-handers, and he's been doing great against left-handers post-All-Star break too, when we're talking about batting average, when we're talking about slugging as well. Someone else that I have on the diamond watch, I don't think he's going diamond, just like I don't think that Brian Reynolds is gonna go diamond this update, but I do believe Brian Reynolds is an 84 to 85. When I say diamond watch, diamond hold, that means you should be investing in them because in the future, they do have that opportunity, of course, to go diamond. So Cedric Mullins, I don't see his contact versus right being increased. I do see his contact versus left. I do see his power versus left and power versus right also being increased. I see him going up to an 83 to 84. He's a diamond hold. If MLB The Show goes ahead and does a fielding upgrade as well, and they give him some arm strength and arm accuracy. Now, I don't know how good his arm is or his arm accuracy, but if they go ahead and upgrade any of those, that could be that surprise push that pushes him all the way up to an 84 might even go all the way up to a diamond depending on how generous they are trey mancini he is going to be a watch for gold now trey mancini he's been doing pretty well he plays first base so what you primarily look at is at his hitting attributes i only see although right now his contact versus left and power versus left going up i see his power versus right going down a little bit he is a hold for gold although what you want to pay attention when it comes to trey mancini is how he does against right-handed pitching if his numbers go up against right-handed pitching he's gonna go ahead and turn into a lock for gold inside the future but as of right now i just see him going up to 78 overall now going to the miami marlins we have the shortstop that had gone gold previously got downgraded back to silver because his hitting started suffering and post all-star break he started picking it back up now last seven games he hasn't been too hot but i think he can rebound and he can go back to gold as he once was now i see his contact versus left it still deserves to be increased and his power versus left as well i don't see anything happening to his contact versus right or power versus right but with his increases to the contact versus left and power versus left i could see him going gold you want to pay attention to his numbers against right handers because that could be the difference maker in him going gold and basically making you a profit of at least 400 50 stubs if you go ahead and purchase him right now then we're gonna look at chris taylor which everybody knows is almost a guaranteed lock for gold because of how well he's been doing now this is what i say once again if mlb the show goes ahead and does a fielding upgrade he might jump up to like an 81 82 overall gold but right now all i see being upgraded is contact versus left and power versus left i don't see anything happening to his contact versus right or power versus right i see him going up to a 79 slash 80 so it could be either or, depending on how generous they are in terms of the upgrade. But I do feel comfortable saying that in the near future, he's going to go gold. I've been talking about him going gold for the longest. And now this is the first person that we have that I feel a lot more confident about hitting that high tier diamond. 
Matt Olson, if you're still holding on to your Matt Olson, he's been doing really well post All-Star break and last seven games as well. I see his contact versus luck being upgraded and his power versus luck being upgraded. And if both of those get upgraded, then he's going to definitely hit that 90 plus mark. He's going to become a high tier diamond. And although I don't see his price jumping up to like 15K, it should jump up to at least 10K around there. And that should be at least a 3K profit margin for a lot of you, especially if you're able to go ahead and buy him for 5.8K, you might be making Making a lot more than that and now a shortstop that I talked about such a long time ago I'm wondering who invested in him when he was quick selling for 1k because that's when I first originally talked about him now I see his contact versus right I see his contact versus left and then power versus left I don't see anything happening to his power versus right I see him going up to an 84 slash 85 overall I think it's gonna depend because they're either gonna go ahead and give Bo the diamond or to Oscar Hernandez the diamond but I don't think they're gonna go ahead and give it to both even though it's completely possible of course now another thing you want to pay attention to is just his numbers versus right handers in general because if his batting average and slugging continues to rise against right handers then he's going to be a lock-in for diamond if he doesn't go diamond this update now we're going back to new york and we're going to the new york mets someone else i've talked about a ton and i talked about him when he was quick selling for 1k so if you didn't sell on him when i talked about him then you're going to be making a profit right now from just going ahead and selling him at the price he's currently at. I see his contact versus left going up, power versus left, and I see his power versus right dropping a little bit. That drop in his power versus right might be enough to keep him at an 84 overall, but he is an in-between. He could go, he could not go. He's more of a 50-50, just like Bo is more of a 50-50, as well as Brian Reynolds could be more of a 50-50. But if he continues hitting the way he's hitting post All-Star break, then I could definitely see Peter Alonso going gold, or excuse me, diamond, because for a first baseman, all they really care about is how well they are hitting. Now going to the catchers, we're gonna go to someone that a lot of people have been talking about for a long time. And I do believe the Salvador Perez still is the catcher that has the highest probability of going diamond out of all the catchers we have. Now, unfortunately, I think his attributes against right-handers are still a little too high. So I see his contact versus right and power versus right getting decreased. I see his contact versus left and power versus left getting increased. So I see him staying at an 84 overall. Worst comes to worst, he stays at an 83 overall. But I do believe he's still a diamond hold. All you have to pay attention to when it comes to Salvador Perez is how he's doing against right-handers. He raises that average and he raises that slugging, especially the slugging. He raises that and he can almost be a guaranteed lock-in for diamond but he's just struggling right now at the plate against right-handers. Now to Oscar Hernandez, he hasn't been doing anything different. He's been doing exactly what we picked up him doing last time, crushing lefties. And that's not going to be enough to guarantee him as a lock, but it is going to be enough to give him a chance to go diamond, since I do believe his contact versus left and power versus left still deserve to be increased. I see him going up to an 85. I have him as a diamond hold. I think it's either going to be him or Bo. It's one of the two. If they do both and you invested into both of them, then you are solid. Like you are making stubs no matter what. Now, a lot of people told me they invested in Mitch Hanniger a long time ago, and at first, I was like, why would you invest in Mitch Hanniger? But now, finally, Mitch Hanniger has lived up to the hype. He's lived up to basically everybody's investments. So his contact versus love, power versus love, both of those deserve to be increased. I see him going up to a gold. 80 overall if he doesn't go gold you're just gonna want to hold him because he's definitely a hold for gold now from the tampa bay race this man dropped out of gold to silver but i think he's gonna jump back up to gold because he's been doing really well now i see his contact versus right and power versus right taking a hit but i do see his power versus left being increased and that might go ahead and prevent him from going gold but if he continues on the pace he's currently at which is basically just refining himself for the second half then he's definitely a candidate to go gold and they finally moved him to left field which it took them long enough but if they would have removed or not removed them but if they would have moved them to left field back when he was hot in the beginning of the season he possibly could have gone diamond because the numbers he had was good enough for that now aj is someone else i really like i think that aj deserves an increase to his contact versus right contact versus left power versus left i don't see anything happening to his power versus or power versus right and i don't see anything happening to his power versus left i see him staying at an 80 overall he's another gold hold i don't think it's an either or between him and chris taylor i just think that aj is going to be the one to hit that now another quiet investment he's been very very hot ever since he came off the dl list for the month of july he's been killing it he's like hitting like 362 or something like that it's harrison bader as he is contact versus right 
power versus right and power versus left he needs to have more time against left-handers before we go ahead and increase his contact versus left but i see him going up to an 82 another diamond hold especially with that great fielding if he continues hitting the way he's hitting he's definitely gonna go ahead and hit that diamond mark and now we're going to the pitcher side of things freddie peralta is still my starting pitcher which i would go ahead and invest in to go diamond he pitched four innings i believe and allowed one hit struck out five walk two in his latest appearance i don't know why he only pitched four innings it must have been the pitch count but i still believe his hit per nine and k per nine both deserve to be increased I don't see his home runs per nine or walk per nine being increased, but he's still that dude that you want to hold for diamond. And then when it comes to the bullpen arms, this is the closest person we have to go in diamond as well. He's had a couple of outings, which he's done a fair job in five innings pitch three hits allowed and then i believe he has somewhere along the lines of maybe seven strikeouts which is not amazing but it should be good enough he's gonna get his case per nine increase based on his three-year averages his walks per nine increase and his home runs per nine increase i have him as a diamond hold as well and now we're going to the oreos we got paul fry paul fry 71 overall i see him being increased to 73 74 overall I see K per nine, I see hit per nine, I see home run per nine, but I don't see walk per nine, 73, 74 overall. Long term, I think he can hit that silver mark. So if you get him for 25 stubs, you'll be able to at least get a profit of 75 stubs if you quick sell him whenever he does go silver. And then Ryan Tepera from the Chicago Cubs has also been pitching extremely well. I see all his pitching attributes getting an increase and I see him eventually hitting that 80 overall gold mark. So he's definitely a gold hold. And then last but not least, we have two more pitchers. One is going to be Harleen Garcia from the San Francisco Giants. I see him going bronze. I see his hits per nine and cases per nine going up. I see them taking a little bit away from his walks per nine and home runs per nine, but it should be good enough to go ahead and push him to that bronze. And then last but not least, we have the San Francisco Giant of McGee. I don't know why I can't type it. Jake McGee, I see him as another gold prospect. I see his hits per nine, case per nine, walks per nine, and then I see them taking away from his home runs per nine, but I still think it's gonna be enough for him to go ahead and hit that gold mark. And those are my predictions for this Friday. So if you did end up enjoying today's content, hit that like button or subscribe button. We stream each and every single day on Twitch at 1 a.m. Eastern. So make sure you go ahead and check one out. And inside the description box, we have my social medias, my other YouTube channels, how to become a member and the Discord as well. Have a blessed day and night. Stay positive, stay safe, stay blessed. And I will catch you all in the next one. Peace out.